back art gang. It's James Calm, the guy on the bike. Continuing with 10 years of high fast reporting. And today we're out here. It's 916 Bedford Avenue at the Bishop Gallery. And we're gonna take a look at an exhibition that I think is pretty interesting. Chris, what's the name of the show again? Street Art versus Graffiti? A History. A History. Okay, this is Chris Chambers. You're one of the curators? Christopher Hart Chambers. <laughs> Christopher Hart Chambers. No, I gotta use Excuse me. It's such a common name that I'm getting mixed okay. up with the other Chris Chambers. And, and all, all the other Chris stuff. Chambers. Well, there seem to be quite a few of us running about. <laughs> Well, tell us what the premise of the exhibition is. Okay, so a lot of this is work from the early 80s, mid 80s, into the 90s? No. All right, tell us everything. Christopher Hart Chambers. The, the, the main point of the exhibition is that there have been a lot of exhibitions by the pundits recently and there are some international uh, street art celebrities making right. fortunes. Banksy. That's one of them. Swoon. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna start naming them, but uh, I doubt if, well, I, you know, I don't know uh, most of these people personally, so I doubt that they really know the history of where this all started. Hey, listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some of them are historians, but in light of the books, the plethora of books and, and movies, exhibitions, movies, etc., I felt that it was important to distinguish between graffiti and street art because it's now all coming under this blanket term of street art, or sometimes they call it urban art. But street art and graffiti, uh, in their incipients, uh, as we think of them today. Um, really it is a phenomenon. Uh, here comes Stevenson, the owner of the gallery. Well, one of the owners of the gallery. Okay, great. Um, Hello. Hi, how you doing? Good. It, in fact, it was actually, it was somewhat jokingly referred to as the art wars. Um, the graffiti writers who were really coming into their day in the limelight, I think perhaps to an extent, unexpected. Certainly there was a, a major culture of the, the writers and this culture was very um, uh, multi-ethnic. The, the guy oh, yeah. who was really uh, originally credited with starting graffiti, Tacky 183, was a, a Greek guy who lived on 183rd Street, Washington Heights. But um, yeah, so it's really multi-ethnic, although it has this sort of idea that it's mostly black and Latino kids. It isn't necessarily, never was. Um, but there, no uh, insult there intended. Um, but just that, so there was a lot of fame and, and you know, amongst- Commercial the, success. No, no, in, in the culture, the graffiti culture yes. itself. <clears throat> But the commercial success in the galleries, I don't know if this was ever really premeditated or thought that this contrived in any way that this would ever happen. Um, so when it did happen, then the, like the, the street art is, is more coming from a fine art um, perspective. And they're stepping into the, the spotlight that these mostly kids or young people. So naturally, there's going to be some resentment about this. You know, I, it's perfectly normal and natural. Well, let's take a look at some of the art. You can maybe talk a little bit about it. I know there's a lot of pieces in here. And well, we've got it divided pretty much right up the middle. Street art on one side and graffiti on the other, other than along this row of tiles, which at the opening reception we encouraged people to tag. Okay, and that's kind of a reference to the uh, t tiles that we always saw on the subway stations. There you go. 
Okay, so we're just going to cruise by here if you want to walk. Well, there's some articles, I guess it says right, Art in America. The format of the exhibition is each artist was asked to bring one original artwork. It was their choice if it was um, older or current. And then next to it, we've got some documentation. Who did this piece? I like this. This is uh, Michael Roman, thank you. Michael Roman. i trying to think of names. Okay. <laughs> Did you catch Dan Witz at the beginning? I actually missed I did. Dan Witz when, uh, back in the day. This stuff what will so you do small. when war comes? Die, die. Uh, this is RV. He's RV. a little bit more political. One thing I, I want to mention, because I'm a little spacey and I do forget stuff. The most difficult thing about arranging or orchestrating this. Oh, wow, we've got a Kino tag here. Whoa, I didn't know he was there. Anyway, he was on stage with us a few weeks ago, and so he came to tag in a couple of days. Oh, what, what, what was I saying? I, I, see, I just said I was absent minded, and I forget <laughs> what I was saying. Um, the hard part about doing the show. Right, right well, thank you. One of the most difficult things was in actually not including a lot more people. One name that stands out in particular was John Fet is John, John Fechner. Fechner. Sure. Now he wasn't really part of this whole crew, this whole scene, whereas most of these it's Richard uh, Hamilton artists kind of knew each other. Sure. And uh, most of the, the graph writers knew each other, and, and there was certainly some intermixing, but there was also some hostility, as I said. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you're not only the curator, but you were involved in what was might have been one of the uh, protein, one of the essential, I don't know what you call it, group, gang, well, <laughs> called Avant. It was in a lot of ways, uh, it was a precursor to a lot of the stuff that people like Banksy is doing. And uh, you did a lot of uh, kind of... Uh, Invasions of various uh, realms of street okay, now, things. Each, each artist who is represented here is for a specific reason. As I, did, I started to say a second ago, that the hardest thing was deciding why not to include certain people because it's not a museum, it's a very large gallery, but we don't have endless space. Right. So we had to pick and choose. And it's not necessarily on the quality of the work. I'm not saying, I'm not even going to judge the quality of the works. It, it's for the historical significance. And the fact that these people were involved in the community that was producing this stuff during a particular time. So the simplest way that I could think of, of making it a very... Who's this by? ...distinction. These are, uh, oh hell. The Hungry oh, Dog. Scott, Scott Borofsky. Scott Borofsky. Now his significance was in um, painting illegal mural type, uh, and they're largely un, like without border. So, so each one has a specific kind of thing that they did, which made them um, unique. Okay, so we get Art World now, 1983. Fechner, the reason Fechner is not included. Oh, because gee. I wanted to make a distinction that essentially street art, at least in this context, is image oriented and that the graffiti is textual or textual to the explore or even more calligraphic. They generally okay. would pick a name like a hip hop musician would have a name or or in that Jim Jarvis right, movie says like American Indians. Your tag, right? Right. Well, no, not really. A tag is a handwritten thing. But it's uh, usually a name, a short a name. A name, a moniker, right. Chico. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> By the way, here I notice uh, one of the pieces that Avant did, we got some uh, Wait, I, I publicity. I just with Fechner. All Fechner's right. was work, although it's specifically, it, it really is fine art rather than calligraphic graffiti. It's textual. So that was where we drew the line. So he did kind of get snarfed. 
also the fact that he wasn't really part of this whole gang, but that was, it was really to make it a, a simple division. And so he kind of made things confused. Now there were, like in, in this piece uh, from back in the day, uh, there Bob is, Bob? yes, there is writing on it, but it's... More like calligraphy, it's not, yeah, no, the Fechner was always trying to kind of play off advertising imagery and sort of inserting things into advertising and using that kind of very, uh, what could I say, standard like print text rather than right. scripto so text. different things, that was the main point of the show. Okay, so let me get back to this. This is a, an ex this is a picture of one of your outdoor, I would call this actually kind of a performance piece along with uh, just the, the art because you did a kind of an exhibition, kind of riffed on the whole idea of having a, a gallery show except it was out in the street. Well, we called it an outstallation. An outstallation, okay. <laughs> There's Samo. some stories involved with that. Okay, so this is Jim Michel Basquiat. No, it's not. Oh, it's the other guy that was doing the Samo, or there were a lot now, of Now, Al will take issue with me <laughs> over this, Al Diaz. In okay. my opinion, and I'll tell you, show you the evidence for this, is that Jean kind of glommed on to uh, Samo is really Al Diaz, or started out. Now, Al's going to be angry that I ever said that. He's a humble thing. I've expressed this to him directly, and he has said no, it was a collaboration. But you'll when I met, when I talk about Flint in a minute, you'll see why I'm saying that. Okay, well let's go over and take a look at so, this. Is so the writer's Samuel side? Was the two of them, Jean Michel Samuel was the two of them. Diaz. Okay. All right. Now Flint, notice the block writing with I a little uh, aphorism. Is Follow your heart to lead you, that's close enough, yeah. And Al has specifically said this was the, um, the, the inspiration for Samo. You wanna take that? And also the three dots, which he doesn't have here. But frequently after a Flint piece, there'll be three dots, which is another an hallmark of Samo. Yeah. Okay. Now I can really, Go on. I don't know if you have the time, but I could really go on about why each individual made a Well, we're, we're just mark. kind of doing a little run through here, and uh, you can put in what you want to. I want to get kind of a nice overview of this. And uh, Okay, here's some dots there. That's Flint with the dots there. Uh, now, this is way early. Look at this next picture. Look at this police truck. What is that? 68? 71? Gosh, I don't that's know. Not, that's not uh, a flying saucer, dude. This yeah. is old school. Uh, that's and nowadays, even this guy here was telling us how he used to sit around and every kid in school had their, you know, tag book. Crack, right, they were, uh, and tag, this, tag and this is, means snake in Spanish, culebra, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Culebra, yes. Snake, this is original snake one. I mean, this yeah, is. Yeah, snake was one of the first uh, graph writers. He was actually the first to ever sell graffiti on camera. Out of the gallery. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> it's all his fault. In 1973, at the Razor um, Gallery, the UGA curated the show. And that's actually a picture of the first piece. Right there. This one right here. Yeah, right there in that little wood frame. Uh, I could even tell you who bought it and give me two seconds. <laughs> now, what I think <laughs> the is. The records. Here's another one. I, I was arguing with Al about this. What I found particularly interesting about Jester was when I was 11 or 12, I remember watching this guy grow up in front of my eyes. I didn't know him, but I watched him develop his style from, he, he was very, very prolific, uh, all city. He, that's why he was sort of known for, was just not being on one train line, but being everywhere. The yards, you know, in out, outdoor pieces, the tags on the inside. Um, but when he first started, he kind of sucked, but within a year, his style had developed so rapidly, and I mean, we, the whole city watched it develop. Now, of course, a lot of people didn't like it because it's... Mo you know, was this mostly happening on the trains? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he did trucks or whatever. I really don't know. It was essentially, trains were the venue. Sure. But, I mean, within a year, the guy had developed really beautiful style. 
which became known later as Wild Style. I, I, I thought that, that was Tracy 168 came up with right, the All right, I knew I was going to get something wrong. <laughs> I knew I was going to screw up some of them. I'm better with the street artists. No, the Jester is definitely with the... Like you said... Bubble. No, Tracy started the balloon uh, bubble letters. The she bubble said, letters no, phase two, one of them. Phase two is the bubble letters. Tracy wants to... This guy's got his history. He's been is, studying. He's better. Yeah, I've been studying. It's my job. It's, okay. It's my job. Tracy 168 is the father of Wild Style. Right. It's every third word out of his mouth is Wild Style. Now this <laughs> here is a, wild <clears throat> This was a thing. This is a bishop. Right, for the, the gallery. bishop gallery. Bishop. Right. So this is a collage that I put together. With an homage to the history. And Have they been bombing the back of it? We would encourage you. No, nobody wrote on it. We were trying to get well, Chris 217, of course. Okay. He's yeah. got, what, 25 tags around the room? This is actually Lee Keonis. Lee. Lee. Lee yeah, is so. the certified master of the oh. spray can. Yeah, you he's still wonder, around. I still is. see him. He's still out there doing why stuff. Why is Future not in here? Okay. Why is Future not in because here? Because Lee's taken, like I said, we got one spot for each thing. Okay. And Lee is, uh, it's a toss up, you know, who's the master of the spray can. Maybe somebody would even say it was Ram Mel Z, but Ram didn't have the street creds of these guys. Um, on, I mean, I, I knew Ram, a nice guy, but in any case, so Lee, Lee is the, he, he's the, the king of, I mean, his technique is, I mean, the guy can freaking paint. He really can paint. Anybody's going to tell you that. He can paint even when he's not using a spray can. <laughs> well, there you go. So it, it was a toss up who's going to be, and uh, I think Lenny was out of town, a uh, future. I think he was um, probably making a million dollars designing sneakers in Japan or something. So, Lee it is. Okay. Well, so this has been a quick walk through of, what was it, graffiti oh, versus and, street art? There's this wall over here that people were encouraged to bomb at the. You uh, missed Tracy's wall. You missed Tracy, we didn't get to talk All about All right, let's see Tracy. Or Richard Hamilton. Okay. This is Tracy 160. Yeah, this is the wall. I'm sorry, we had one of the walls yesterday. Well, I uh, <laughs> remember stretching some canvas for Tracy back in the day, <laughs> like oh, dragging yeah. these things over to the subway, you know, big six by four foot canvases and dragging them back to the subway so he could take them home. For three dimensions, he started bolting uh, metal sculptures to street signs. Okay. Hiratsuko was literally street art. He carved these lines into the sidewalks in the streets. Some of these things are still around down in Soho. You can still walk around and see see these carvings in some of the slate down in the street. All right. So I don't think there have been any other real historical shows that put it that tell the story accurately by those who were there and who know. All right, They're thanks. They're college professors. <laughs> God forbid. Anyway, what's the name of the show again? Street Art street versus art Graffiti? Versus graffiti. No, I think it's Graffiti versus Street graffiti Art. Graffiti versus Street Art. Graffiti came first. A history here at the Bishop Gallery. We get Linus Garage. Is it 9, 916 Bedford Avenue? Yes, sir. And as always, thank you, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thank you.